Hello, and welcome to this training video on the A10C Warthog 2. Now before we actually start our tutorial series on the Warthog 2, what I want to do is actually show you a neat little trick. One of the most difficult parts of filming this tutorial series is actually going to be how to handle head tracking, how to handle looking around in the cockpit. Since the A10C2 and the A10C Warthog are two modules that have a lot of buttons that you can click on to actually toggle states on various systems and even work the systems, you're really going to have to have some kind of a solution for looking around. This is Smooth Track. I'm running it on my iPhone, but there's also an Android version as well. It works in conjunction with a free uh, open source head tracking software called OpenTrack. Now, there is a full tutorial on how to set this up in the uh, description down below. I highly recommend you give it a look because this is going to make things a hell of a lot easier when you're trying to learn how to operate the A10C. Let's move back to the main camera. Now there are a couple of caveats with uh, OpenTrack and SmoothTrack. For example, I'm going to enable the tracking right now and you'll notice that it is following my head. I actually have it set up so that it amplifies my movements. If I look about you know a quarter of the way, I'm, I'm turning about uh, 90 degrees to the left or the right and it actually works very well very very accurate you notice that with just some slight head movements I'm able to look around the cockpit look back to my engines and all kinds of stuff I can look all the way down to the panels that are behind me to the left all the way behind me to the panels to the right etc now there are a lot of keyboard commands for open track for smooth track for example, pausing the camera, resetting the center position. So if you look around a lot, uh, the, the camera will tend to drift a little bit, and you might be looking straight forward and have it kind of centered here, if that makes sense. So you can always recenter the camera whenever you want using a hotkey. Um, let me go ahead and center it appropriately again. And there are a couple of other things that are a little bit wonky, like you'll notice that even if I don't move my head very much, it's kind of jittering around just a little bit here, and it's it's actually seeing little micro movements as I'm talking. Um, and these are kind of the things that you see if you're watching VR videos and you watch you know somebody just kind of talking, and it looks like their head is jittering around all over the place. Um, it's because your head is actually moving slightly, you just don't realize it. So there are a couple of caveats. It does take a little bit of getting used to. If you don't want to spend a bunch of money on Track IR or a VR headset this is probably the next best thing. I'm going to highly recommend y'all take a look at this at least for some kind of a head tracking solution so that when we're going and looking around through the cockpit, we can actually find the controls that we're looking to toggle on and off and, and, and cycle through, and we can actually work through the various systems in the MFD. Now, again, uh, I'm linking a video on how to set uh, smooth track and open track to work together uh, down in the description below. So go ahead and take a look at that. Let me go ahead and stop my camera. The other option is, of course, to use the number pad. Now, if you have open track or smooth track working in the background, that doesn't work so well. It kind of locks you to the open track, smooth track inputs. Uh, you can't do things like uh, reset your zoom or zoom in and out using your keyboard because it's assuming that your head is going to be doing that by moving forward and backward. The last thing that I'm going to recommend for the A10C especially, I know that in the SU25T tutorial, you are able to actually go through and use that with the mouse and keyboard. The A10C is a totally different beast. While you can get by with using a mouse and keyboard, I'm going to strongly recommend that you at least get something like a Thrustmaster T-Flight 16000. Um, I fly with a Thrustmaster Warthog HOTAS, and uh, I think that it's kind of one of the only ways to go if you're going to get into any of the more advanced modules. Not the uh, Thrustmaster HOTAS necessarily, but at least something like a T-Flight 16000. Um, at the very, very minimum, something like a Microsoft Sidewinder or a uh, uh, Logitech 3D Pro. However, those don't have a lot of precision, so you actually might not really find them to be all that great. Now, any kind of joystick will work, so absolutely go and take a look within your budget. I have a couple of links, uh, Amazon affiliate links, um, down in the description below as well. So if you want to go and take a look at my Amazon store, you'll see a lot of flight sim gear that I've used over the years and actually recommend. Um, right now, with the pandemic and stuff, 
prices are a little bit inflated, so maybe look around from Amazon as well just so that you can find the best deal. Um, you don't need rudder pedals. A lot of joysticks come with an actual twist function on the joystick, which simulates rudder pedals. Um, I do have a set of rudder pedals that I use. Uh, I've reviewed them on my channel uh, about two years ago, and I, I think they're fantastic. I still love using those rudder pedals. And um, what else can I talk about? I mean, if you have VR, by all means use VR. It's a fantastic experience here in DCS. Uh, Smooth Track, I believe, is $10 or $9 on whatever app store you're using, uh, the Android App Store or the Google Play Store um, or the iPhone App Store. So a little bit of an investment, but a lot cheaper than 140 or 160 or whatever track IR is right now. Although, if you can't afford it, it's very hard to beat it. So that's the end of this video. That's really all I wanted to talk about before we get into the A10C tutorial series. There's going to be a lot of uh, buttons and I'm not even going to try to convert those into keyboard commands. You're, you're just going to have to have a joystick of some sort and uh, we'll talk about the various buttons that we're going to need to know for those joystick commands uh, as we get into the tutorial series. So I'll see you in that. Um, hopefully that'll be starting very soon, um, looking at possibly next week. Have a great evening, everybody, and I will see you once the tutorial series starts.